All right, folks, I thought I'd come back and do a quick sort of recommendation episode. I think I'll do a, a mixture of different uh, things for our members-only videos and recordings going forward, a mixture of just me talking about a subject, um, maybe an interview or two, if we can get the technology working on that, discussions with other people, maybe with members, um, and also maybe some recommendations of cool things that you may not know about. And so the first one I grabbed off of my bookcase that I thought is, you know, one of the first things I always go to when I recommend something to, uh, to my friends is Christopher Moeller's Iron Empires. It started out coming out from Dark Horse back around 1994 as Shadow Empires, but it came out about the same time that the Star Wars um, comics universe of that time put out something called uh, Shadows of Empire or something like that. And so there was some confusion, brand confusion. And so Moeller voluntarily changed his to Iron Empires. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a visual aid of this. Um, here is a trade paperback of volume. It's kind of coming apart. This copy is very old. I bought it used. I have the original comics. But here is the trade paperback of volume one, the, the, the Faith story, Faith Conquers. Um, here is the second volume that came out in 1998 from DC's Helix science fiction imprint called Shiva's War. Okay. And with different characters, but the same universe, the same situation going on. And then just recently, as a Kickstarter-funded project, interestingly, Moeller has come back with a third volume. I have the good old hardcover of this one uh, called Void. Okay, so I'm just going to say a few quick things about each one of these. No spoilers, really, just to tell you why you should care and why should, you should run out and try to get copies of these. And maybe even we'll see if we can figure out where you can get copies, okay? Okay. Um, I picked this up as issue one of a four-part, I think it was, yeah, four-part comic book uh, in 1994, and I immediately said it's the coolest thing ever, and everybody should go out and get it, and really nobody did. Uh, it's criminal how ignored this fantastic uh, story and creation of Chris Moeller's is. Um, this, it's got elements of Warhammer 40,000 in it. It's got elements of Dune in it. It's one of those far-future empires at war, there's an outside enemy coming in. Sounds a lot like the Shattering, now that I think about it. My Legion novels were probably influenced by this as well. How could they not be? Um, I am the, when I, I mean just as a personal connection to this, okay? When I started writing the, um, the script for my three-part Cold Lightning military science fiction comic book graphic novel that's based on, the, on my Shattering universe and and um, the Legion's you know, universe. When I started writing that script, I read through these just to get a sense of how something like that would be written, right? The pacing, the structure of the story, the panels per page, the dialogue. There's so much that you have to do and get right in a comic like this when you're writing it. And um, when I did that, I was absolutely amazed. I mean, it's, it's one thing to just read it as a story like you're watching a TV show or a movie. And, you know, as you read it as a story, you're like, wow, this is a really great story, really great characters. But when you go back and look, look at it analytically, when you look at it like, how would I do this? Or how can I take lessons from how Moeller does this and apply it to my own work? I was just blown away. Um, absolutely blown away by how he did it. And so impressed, so impressed. I only hope that, um, that Cold Lightning is close to as good of a quality as this because this is really fantastic stuff. In this first book, uh, Faith Conquers, it's the story of Trevor Faith, who's the sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger looking character here, and he's sort of part priest, part soldier. Uh, this is a universe where uh, the church, um, you know, there, there are rival religious groups that have a lot of political, temporal power, and and Faith is a high-ranking, um, almost like a bishop or a cardinal, in one of those faiths, the Mundus Humanitas. And they have this great armor, kind of a Warhammer-style armor. Uh, and in this story, he is sent 
to a frontier world way out on the fringe that is just starting to be menaced by a, a, an insidious, almost invisible alien menace. And so it's a story of how he has to deal with both the alien menace and with his own people who either don't believe, don't want to believe, or are in league with the aliens. And it's fantastically structured, great characters, compelling. And as you can see the art, I've only shown you the cover, but um, the way he does the art, it's fully painted all the way through. And I want to find you, like, here's a tremendous two-page splash page of Faith fighting a big um, troll-like creature that's, that's actually a genetic creation of the humans, I believe. And then in other cases, you get, you know, fantastic multi-panel uh, like this. Just fantastic stuff. Um, so that's Faith, Con uh, Faith Conquers. He came back, Muller came back a few years later with Shiva's War. Totally different protagonist. The Lady Shiva is, she's a telepath. They call them, I forget what they call them in here. He has a particular term for telepaths. But in this, it's a completely different story. She's kind of a cynical, older lady who used to be kind of a courtesan, uh, high, you know, high society. And she's played at being a soldier, but now she has to actually be one as those same aliens now come to her planet. And again, it's kind of out in the boondocks. Uh, out in the, and, and, and the aliens bring some pretty scary... Uh, they bring some pretty scary uh, foot soldiers and other uh, supporting uh, creatures with them. So you get more psychic stuff uh, and an interesting character to get her perspective from a female character who's become sort of uh, disillusioned and has to regain her idealism in the face of this alien invasion. Okay, very well done. Uh, and then lastly, and I'll make this, like I said, pretty quick, Iron Imp... Uh, Again, we're having strange video problems. I want to get these out today, and I'll work on it later. Oh, there there we go. We're, if, if, if you didn't experience an outage there, that's great, but I did. I was frozen up on the, uh, on the camera, and I am frozen up again currently, so I'll just talk about it. Uh, wow, the book looks great. I look like an idiot there. Hopefully it doesn't look that way on the actual recording. Um, Iron Empire, Iron Empire's Void. This is the newest one. Came out in 2013 from his own creator-owned imprint, Forged Lord, Forged Lord Comics. And this one is about a shi a fleet captain, like a captain that flies these big um, gun-looking ships. And uh, it's about the. I just read it a couple of months ago, and fortunately, I like when I forget things because that means I get to go back and read them and enjoy them again because I've forgotten them. But it's about uh, the standard story where people don't want to listen to him. You know, he's a lower-ranking commander, and people don't want to listen to him. And so the commanders that think they know better are going to lead the fleet to ruin, and he's trying to do everything he can to um, basically not get himself executed for insubordination, but at the same time save the fleet from being wiped out. So this one's more of a naval story, right? More about a naval officer. So you've got a, you've got a foot soldier who's fantastic, a warrior priest. You've got a, uh, a, an aristocratic lady who's a telepath. And you've got a, 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 fleet ca a, a ship's captain that his own people don't really want to listen to. Uh, three very compelling protagonists, all facing similar threats in the, in the form of, of this insidious alien menace. Um, where you can get them, I would just Google uh, Iron Empires, Christopher Moeller, M-O-E-L-L-E-R. Uh, they may be on Amazon. I think there's a web page. In fact, let me click here on a couple of clicky thingies here and see if it doesn't take me to, no, it takes me to a Wikipedia page. Well, that's not what we want. Um, I believe if you go to, uh, if you search for Forged Lord Comics on Google, I know you don't want to watch me Googling, but hey, what the heck, let's give it one shot. Let me have a little, a little sip, keep me going. And then I'm going to say Forged Lord Comics. And sure enough, Burning Wheel brings you to a store. Yeah, there you go. Forge Lord Comics brings you a, a web store with all the various books for sale for fairly reasonable prices. I think I got this one 
the hardback for less than 20 bucks on Amazon. Fantastic deal. Well worth the money. Okay. So give those a try. And uh, that one's for you. Here's to you, Chris Muller. Great work. Keep up the good work. I'm looking forward to Volume 4 one of these days. And if I had known there was a Kickstarter, I would have joined it for that. I didn't know. I'll keep my eye out now for Volume 4 Kickstarter. And the rest of you, you should do that as well. Uh, that'll do it for another, for another uh, of our private episodes. Good stuff. Um, again, don't forget, tell your friends. Tell people you know that might enjoy the stuff I'm going to be producing here. My books, my comics, audio books, no, uh, novels, nonfiction, everything, videos, podcasts about every topic. Spread the word. Help us get the word out. Just a dollar a month gets you access to some of these things. Um, and, the, and the benefits get better as you go higher, of course. So spread the word. And I appreciate it. And if since you are watching this, you are a member. You are very appreciated, and I want to do the best work I can for you. So Rocket's going to get on out of here for another week. Uh, thanks for being a member of the White Rocket family, and we'll see you guys down the road. Click the button, man! <laughs>